That much said, thank you very much, Monsieur Servou. So, vielen Dank für, für diese Vorstellung. <laughs> so, good evening. We are trying to survive with all the different uh, problems with technology and make all the demo. Uh, there is only one demo that it will be not possible to do, but we will put all the technical details on the website uh, along with, uh, alongside with uh, the slide. So, I'm Eric and here Paul. We have worked on security or insecurity of mobile banking and we are we are going to present a few results uh, of, uh, about what we have found. So here is the, table, uh, the, the agenda of this presentation. So I will first introduce the background. In fact, all these studies have been performed during the DEFI Def project. I will present this project. And then Paul will explain the different tool he has developed uh, to perform uh, static analysis, to collect different uh, uh, APK, uh, and to perform the dynamic analysis. Then we will switch to the results. First, uh, I will give some statistics about the different apps we have uh, analyzed, and Paul will present four cases which uh, are rather illustrative of what we have found. And we, you will see that, uh, especially for the first one, very surprising things can be found. And then we, uh, uh, I will conclude. So, uh, in fact, the DAFI project it w uh, was a two-year project uh, to develop a sovereign and trusted AV uh, for Android platform, Linux platform, and Windows. Not for Apple, because the French government was not interested in Apple. Too, too much big brother. And um, it has been funded partly by the French government, in fact, the Prime Minister Office, in the context of the uh, digital plan for sovereignty. The, the grand total uh, was uh, about 6 million euros, and on the state, the government has funded only 35%. So, uh, as a, a research lab, we have, we have produced the proof of concept and then we have delivered the, in, uh, the product and as well as the intellectual property to a society who is in charge of the uh, marketing. And the name is no longer DAFI because that's, DAFI was a project and is Uro Mobile and for the mobile uh, Android platform and Uro Anti Malware for Linux and um, Windows. Normally, it was in the, in the, the timetable, uh, normally free and open versions should be released, uh, at least for non-commercial use. I hope they will, they will do it. But uh, at the lab, we have decided to, be, to work on a fork version and for Linux, at, uh, at least. And normally, by mid-March, uh, we should release everything, including the, co the source code. And the name will be Open Daffy Linux. But if you want more information, please refer to the official web page of, uh, of the project. So, if we focus on the Daffy Android uh, platform, in fact, we have delivered uh, the product one year ahead of the schedule, and uh, so in October 2013. It was based on Cyanogen and IOSP sources. In fact, from the beginning, it was clear that. Um, uh, implementing another uh, antiviral application will be a failure because if you go deeper into the system, you can get rid of the, uh, the application. So, in fact, we decided to build a complete uh, anti-malware operating system. So, we rewrite the Android system based on these two sources. And we have uh, added some additional security features, like file, total file system encryption, SMS encryption, VOIP encryption, and especially uh, uh, an application market accepting only secure and analyzed, certified, and digitally signed um, applications. So that's why we decided to analyze a lot of applications, including um, banking applications. So all those apps are analyzed, Static analysis, dynamic analysis, and Paul will present the different uh, techniques. And of course, we are, we are going until the production of the source code by reversing step. And we have defined, of course, a security policy, a trust policy. I'm going to present right after. And if 
it is not a malware if the application does not contain any uh, malicious feature and is compliant to this security policy, then the application is certified and is, is digitally signed and put on the market. And for uh, the different uh, feature, please refer to the official website of Novaity Company. So, the trust policy. In fact, if you just consider that uh, whether the app is a malware or not, it's not sufficient. Because between malware and very safe uh, application, you can have a lot of things. Non-desirable property, and especially regarding data confi confidentiality and users' privacy, it, which is a big problem. So in fact, the malware, what is malicious, must, must be extended to something a little bit broader than simple malware functions. And in fact, we have, we have defined a trust policy an application is trustworthy if, of course, it is not a malware, it is a minimum, but it does not uh, contain hidden functionalities. Uh, no information is collected unless it is strictly necessary for the application. And uh, every communication between the application and the remote server uh, must be encrypted. And of course, there is no non-vulnerabilities. So why? Did, did, did we focus on banking applications? But in fact, banks are forcing us to use more and more uh, the, or tablets and smartphones in order to connect to a bank account. And more and more, the conventional banks will disappear. So it is our money. Banking applications give uh, direct access to our money and all the data about what we have purchased uh, and, and so on. So, of course, it's a critical issue. And for example, as a user, I don't want that my bond uh, has too much or too many information about uh, what I am doing. And of course, any external attacker. So, uh, and the other aspect, since banks have much money, normally they are supposed to do a clean job perfect job, and they should normally release only very secure and safe application. So we have uh, contacted all the banks in order to uh, alert them about the problem we have found, and everything that was free. Uh, but uh, up to now, only a very uh, a few of banks have uh, answered and asked for more details. Only two in France. Uh, have uh, asked for the, the technical details and are co uh, currently correcting uh, the part regarding vulnerabilities. I'm not sure that they will do it for uh, users' privacy, but it's another problem. We will check, however. So, so, it, uh, so I, uh, I make uh, three tools. Uh, one uh, for antivirus and static analysis called AGID. Uh, a, a second one for uh, web querying of uh, uh, web application to find uh, wild malwares. And the third one uh, for dynamic uh, analysis, in fact, network communication uh, uh, monitoring. And uh, I started with uh, 1,800 uh, uh, applications, both malware and uh, genuine. Uh, and these tools are not uh, are not present uh, are not open source at the time. So the, the goal of uh, EGID is to uh, detect uh, malware based on uh, similarity with uh, known malwares. Uh, the main hypothesis is um, that there is no common, not necessarily common characteristic that defines, uh, that characterize all malware. Uh, it's why the traditional way of uh, detecting malware is to uh, splitting them into uh, families of malware. Uh, it's uh, these uh, families that share common characteristics. So if we could uh, do some sort of statistics on uh, these uh, families, 
and we compare them to uh, the statistics uh, from a genuine application, we could uh, reveal this uh, common characteristics. Um, uh, uh, well. uh, AG can also produce uh, static uh, analysis re report for uh, manual analysis. I will show you it. Uh, sorry, uh, th there was th there was a um, demonstration between, uh, uh, but because of the bugs of the at the beginning, I I could not uh, show you it. So it, uh, it, will be, it will be on the website. Yeah. So you will find uh, all the missing so information. When uh, I scan an application with Egid, it. Uh, basically reversed it to an equivalent of uh, source code and uh, um, uh, it extracts uh, lots of characteristics like uh, permission, file digest, uh, class and methods name, entry point uh, method, um, uh, known behavior for, uh, uh, from um, um, malware, something like that, and uh, all this information are used to um, make uh, similarity scores uh, uh, to compare an app with a malware family. Okay, this is uh, the demonstration I could not show you, but I will I explain you uh, quickly. So uh, this report uh, um, summarizes some of this ext extracted data. Can, uh, tu peux remettre uh, juste au début, s'il te plaît. Uh, this report summarizes some of these uh, extracted data to help uh, a manual analysis. So uh, we we get uh, basic uh, um, basic data like uh, permission, but uh, more important one like uh, risky behaviors. We can see there it's not translated because it's uh, for internal use, so it's in French. French, sorry, uh, and the table of uh, uh, risky Android API call. So uh, these risky calls uh, are seen two times more in malware than in a genuine application. It's why uh, it's uh, nice to to see where they are used in the code. So when uh, I click on, uh, for example, uh, location service, which is a, a known behavior detected. Uh, I can see where, um, where uh, on the code it is uh, used, and when I click on uh, one of these functions, I can um, see the reversed code. So it's uh, a sort of a guide uh, for manual analyzing a starting point. Um, so, sorry for the format, but it is it's also Windows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Normally, it was, it was uh, we should uh, do yeah. it on Linux, but Windows has some. Windows is plug and play, but uh, can uh, <laughs> just can uh, print text correctly. Because we have a di direct link between <laughs> the report and the source code, and it, in, uh, it is possible then to check. Uh, whether it is a, a genuine uh, call, a non-dangerous call, and all a malware call. So we have the link, a per, a constant link between the report and the source code. Okay, let's uh, let's carry on. So. Uh, uh. Let's carry on. Yeah, it's a messy start. Uh, sorry for this. So uh, let's uh, go on. Yeah, there. You pass? No, no. no. Um, the the antivirus uh, work pretty well, uh, but not as I expected, and the reason was uh, the database of uh, malware application was too small for um, for being serious in the antivirus game. Uh, so I designed a, a massive web crawler uh, called Tarantula to um, to do download um, uh, lots of applications and uh, 
hoping they were malware. <laughs> so, in, in reality, this subject is of, of gathering samples um, in the antivirus game is the heart of the matter. Um, it's a subject which is rarely explained uh, or detailed in a research paper. Um, and as basically, uh, a data mining al algorithm uh, needs uh, st uh, strong statistics, so uh, a big database. So, how can we gather lots of samples? Several universities uh, share them freely, like uh, North Carolina State uh, University uh, with the Malgenome Project, and uh, the University of Göttinger here in Germany with the Drubin dataset. Uh, also, some websites share Android malware, like VillageShare and ContagioDump. Maybe you have heard of it. Uh, it's a good starting point, but not, not enough. So, um, I, uh, I research on how the um, malware company, antivirus companies, uh, get their sample. So my main guess is that they, um, they, they get the sample from, uh, client and user submission and, uh, inter, ex ex inter company exchange mainly. Um, here is an uh, Andrew's report when we can see that 70% of their, their, their apps they, they got, um, uh, it's from intercompany exchange. And uh, um, unknown sample, la something labeled as unknown sample, which is in fact user and client submission. So it means uh, you cannot mimic uh, in a laboratory. So I, I um, designed a, a crawler called Tarantula, uh, which uh, get a sample from uh, wild FTP, torrents, uh, and uh, alternative market mainly. Uh, I stopped crawling at uh, uh, two, uh, 280 uh, uh, thousand applications, and uh, the yes, it's. Uh, the schema for uh, the internal uh, structure of Tarantula. Um, and... Um, que tu peux passer la suite, s'il te plaît? And the malware discovery um, uh, with uh, the application I've, I've got is uh, a work in progress. But I hope I will find lots of malware. Um, the last tool I'm going to present you is uh, dynamic analysis one. I called it Panoptes, and it basically uh, monitors almost all communications uh, between an app and internet, even the encrypted one. So at the end of the analysis, it generates uh, a graph of network communication to help um, to to help. Um, um, detecting some behavior uh, in this mess of information. I, you, will sh uh, you will see the, the graph uh, when I will uh, present the, the banking application. So I, I just told you it bypass SSL. Uh, as I control the phone, I put a certification, a fake certification authorities in the phone, and uh, my phone connects to a fake access point, and uh, basically the SSL uh, requests are intercepted, and, uh, um, and uh, the requests, uh, um, the, the destination server address uh, requests are, are sent back uh, to the phone, signed uh, by our fake certificate, so the phone actually believes that it is a legit communication. So, uh, at the present time, we have analyzed um, 
in detail, uh, 27 applications, and of course we will go on and, uh, and uh, increasing the results, and everything will be made public little by little. So as you can see, we have uh, uh, at the beginning um, analyzed a French bank, um, but we, we, tr we try to cover all the world, and the next step uh, will be to analyze uh, banks from uh, Asia, uh, because there are a lot of uh, development in, the, in banking applications. So, uh, before pl presenting the four, the four illustrative cases we have identified, in fact, I would like to present some statistics which uh, we are summarizing what we have found. First, if we have a look to permission, uh, we see that uh, those uh, applications generally are very invasive and uh, they, have a lot of, uh, they, they get a lot of uh, access to many, many internal data in our smartphones or tablets, which is very uh, worrying because they can eavesdrop many, many in information. But it is probably more interesting if you um, consider the behaviors. Uh, you have here the main behavior that are uh, uh, involved in the in the in the application uh, between the, the, the smartphone and the server, and two of them are rather interesting. First, uh, here it is possible to identify uh, specifically um, a phone, but if you consider here. This percentage, which is rather high, 96%, uh, are loading uh, dynamically the content of the, uh, of the app from the web. It means that this content can be a liquid content, but it can be on purpose and very, very specifically a malicious content. It depends whether you trust your bank or not. Uh, and here, the second... The second um, the second uh, behavior, which is uh, rather interesting, is this. Many phones are uh, by now vulnerable to the execution of arbitrary Java JavaScript um, uh, instructions. So it means that it is possible by perverting this and exploiting the fact that many phones are still able to, um, are still vulnerable, but now for the newer version, the number of uh, JavaScript that can be uh, executed is limited, but for uh, older version it is not, and it is possible to remotely execute possible JavaScript, um, malicious JavaScript. Of course, either if you are on the banks, or if you are uh, an attacker, for example, in man the middle attack, we will see one bank is vulnerable to this, to this kind of attack. So, uh, let's get started with the, the demonstration. The report. Okay. I will start by uh, GP Morgan Access, which is a mobile banking app of uh, GP Morgan. And uh, here is the, the graph of network communication I've told you about uh, just before. Uh, so there are um, an, an interesting uh, JSON file received from uh, GP Morgan servers. We can see there. So the, um, the, the graph shows all the sessions uh, and uh, summarize all communication for uh, a server address. OK? And <laughs> We can also see all strings that uh, the application uh, send to a certain to um, to a host. So uh, it's it's for finding uh, some um, data leak, personal data leak. So here we can see just two strings are send. It's uh, either in the argument of a get method or in a post request. Uh, so here, uh, the application received uh, a JSON file there. And so here we can see signature. Uh, as f at the beginning, I, uh, I thought it was a bit long for signature uh, uh, for authentication, for example. So maybe uh, it is um, an encrypted string. Uh, I 
just after that, I uh, um, used a tool called API Monitor to see if uh, after receiving this string, the app uh, uh, decrypts something. So, so uh, wait, API Monitor, uh, basically it reverse the app and monitor function around uh, Android calls that we configure and uh, at runtime uh, dump the content of the arguments into the logcat, which is the centralized Android uh, log system. So uh, we can see argument of function we configure uh, dynamically. So, est-ce que tu peux remettre euh, juste avant, s'il te plaît? Le, voilà. Uh, it's not very visible, but uh, <laughs> sorry for this. Uh, here, trust me, it's uh, the received string signature. Uh, it's a little messy there, mais, but it's uh, the string uh, I just uh, show you before, and. Uh, this is no, no, ne passe pas, s'il te plaît. This is uh, uh, a decryption function um, uh, used, and these uh, ASCII codes are in fact the argument of the, the decipher function, and uh, here the result value at runtime. So what I did is I uh, I um, uh, I copy, copy uh, the return value and I use some just some uh, scripting uh, commands to get a readable uh, string. So here we go, the readable string. Voilà. So it's a uh, several string uh, separated by a pattern and uh, the content of the string are not very important because uh, it's the pattern. Uh, with this pattern, we can search in the code, in the reverse code, uh, where this uh, string are used and what it, uh, what the application do. So it's what I did. I cannot show you the code because it's uh, proprietary. So uh, uh, it's just a subset. Um, just just uh, to show you uh, what it do. So the string is received, uh, passed with this pattern, and um, a part of this string is sent directly into a shell command. Uh, I reversed this uh, this function, run command. Uh, it's not a, a basic uh, Android uh, uh, function, uh, and. If the phone is uh, have root privilege, uh, this command executes uh, the argument as root privilege. So basically, what it means it's it's a remote shell. So why why they did this? Why they uh, at uh, runtime when you launch the app uh, um, send a, a command from uh, their website and execute it on your phone? It's a part of, the, of a framework that verifies the, um, the security of the phone. Um, and a part of this verification is done by sending shell commands to verify if the phone has been infected or, um, or so on. But they could have done it differently. For example, loading a verification uh, procedure from encrypted assets, for example. But uh, this way of, uh, of verification uh, lets the phone vulnerable because they can send arbitrary command uh, targeted because uh, uh, the, the connection are, um, the application sends the IMEI, which uh, identify one particular device. So if they want, they can send uh, arbitrary command at a targeted device. So basically, uh, we, we have to consider it as a backdoor. The next application is BNP Paribas. It's a French application. Uh, 
So let's see the, the network communication. So here, uh, we receive an interesting JavaScript uh, code. It's there in clear text. You can see it, HTTP in clear text. And let's get the JavaScript. So we cannot see because there are nothing to see here. So this not seems to be a regular JavaScript function. So maybe this is a JavaScript interface. And JavaScript interface in Android are bad. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it perm it uh, grants the JavaScript the right to call defined function of uh, Java application. But in older version, version of Android, uh, there was a flow and um, the JavaScript could um, call arbitrary command uh, by reflection. So the JavaScript could get a shell, for example. And there are lots of uh, vulnerable phones in use today. So when, you, when they do it in clear text, it, uh, any mind in the middle attacker can control the phone, basically. So, ben, so it is a major vulnerability. So B BNP has taken this information, is currently trying to, con to, to correct the vulnerability. So it is summarized there. The next one is uh, a Russian bank, the spare bank, and uh, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting example. Not because it is vulnerable; it's not vulnerable. It send it leak some informations, but you will see why it is very interesting. <coughs> So here, so it uses an API called Yandex Maps API, and let's see what it sends. Wi-Fi networks, and this is the MAC address of my uh, fake access point used for doing uh, um, network monitoring. So. It uh, dump all surrounding. Uh, it ma it maps the, the Wi-Fi networks, the surrounding Wi-Fi networks. So why why they do why they do it? Uh, it's uh, I done some research and it is uh, in fact it is used for fine indoor location. Uh, and every every other operator did this way. Um, Google Maps uh, do it this way too, and it sends also the SSID of uh, all Wi-Fi networks. And uh, when we can see the, the responses of uh, these uh, calls, so let's try one. No, this is not one. Uh, it's a random try, so maybe not the first. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it sends uh, Wi-Fi networks, and the response is phone by Wi-Fi. So they know my Wi-Fi, and uh, they get my location with my Wi-Fi. Uh, it means that they have my Wi-Fi MAC address in their database. But how do they have all this information? In fact. When you, uh, for example, Google Maps, uh, all the time they send uh, uh, all surrounding Wi-Fi networks with your last uh, known GSM location because GSM, loca GSM cannot locate you precisely indoor. 
So they map uh, UFI networks with the last, last uh, fine GSM location. This way, they, they populate their database, and um, so they can um, uh, locate other users. So basically, they have a database of world Wi-Fi networks. Wonderful. <laughs> and it's not a, it's not a, especially Yandex. It's a Google Maps and other uh, companies that do uh, that does um, Wi-Fi uh, location. And it's not uh, it's not the end because they re-implement uh, the Google Map API. They do not use it, Yandex. Um, your your option for disabling the the location have just no effect on uh, this application on, on Sparebank. So we can disable your location. It's track your your location. So the last one is uh, Bradesco, um, a Brazilian bank. In this uh, application, uh, is um, some exchange are sent with uh, this host, uh, web service info infomoney.com.br, and an interesting session there. We receive a private key in clear text. There. So, uh, what? Uh, why? This private key. I just done some uh, quick uh, research. So basically. Uh, uh, you take this address, copy. Ah, oui. no, no internet connection. So I can see you, but I will explain you. Uh, this private key is for accessing the web service of the bank. <laughs> voilà. Uh, and this is not over. Uh, the, the application embed uh, a jQuery JavaScript uh, file, the, the library, uh, but it is very, very outdated from uh, 2010. So uh, there are several vulnerabilities that have been discovered and uh, they are in the uh, CVE database. Um, I, I did not uh, find a way to exploit these vulnerabilities, but, oh, but others surely can do it. It's just what I say. Uh, thank you. <laughs> well, this is the end of the presentation. Uh, I will be pleased to answer uh, your question. So, and I will let Eric Fier conclude. So, in fact, uh, it is only a small sample because 20, uh, 27 apps is a small part of, of uh, what we intend to, to cover. But uh, in the forthcoming weeks, uh, many details, details will be published. In fact, we just uh, we are waiting either for the answer of the bank uh, or uh, for uh, the correction of the problem. And of, of course, uh, if the banks do, do not answer, so we'll, uh, we'll have to publish at least in order to make them aware of the problem. So uh, we intend, uh, uh, of course, to analyze other kind of apps because, for example, games are maybe Games is less, less important than banking, of course, but it can leak uh, a lot of data, and we intend to, to see whether the new, for example, the new version of Angry Bird and so on con still contains many non desirable functionalities. Uh, email clients, security tools, because we have, or we have some concern about apps 
who are supposed to protect our phone, but in fact they are leaking information and uh, 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 making our, our smartphone or tablet weaker. So, um, in fact, all those tools are uh, still under development and we intend to, uh, to put more mathematics in order, to, for example, to use some advanced techniques in uh, data mining in order to have a better view and understanding of the different com um, uh, relationship between uh, IPI call or functionality, internal functionalities. Um, of course, for, uh, every time uh, a bank will correct the security issue, we will look afterward in order if they correct uh, the security and the uh, user's privacy as well. Because in fact, just switching from HTTP to HTTPS, if you don't correct the vulnerability, is not a solution. So we will be very careful about the respect of the privacy aspect on, in bank, banking apps. So, it is only a small, uh, we are very sorry not to uh, uh, having been able to show all the technical details, but everything will be made public as soon as possible. In fact, it is clear that the banking ab uh, application market is not a very, a very ma mature market. And um, the, of course, we have found some vulnerabilities, but as main uh, figure, uh, as main uh, aspect, in fact, the user's pri privacy is not respected. So banks are collecting a lot of information that they should not collect and we are not strictly related to the bank, the, the bank account management. So I think that every, everyone should uh, put a big pressure on developers, and of course, maybe, this may be a dream, but I think that as, a, as users and consumers, we should, have, uh, we, we should uh, ask for more security, and especially for, uh, regarding uh, privacy and data confidentiality. Uh, the main problem was to find identify contact in banks. If you, and even for French bank, we are French. It was very very difficult. And even going through the CER, uh, CERT, computer emergency response team in the banks, they are not communicating between themselves. So it's very difficult. So what is interesting? All those apps are as well on the Google uh, Play. It means that Google does, no, does not perform any security verification. So don't trust applications because they are on the Google Play. There is no verification. I think, uh, however, that Google has the power maybe to enforce some trust policy and to ask for more security. Well, so what's the solution? Once again, if they are avail available, choose open source apps, but in banking world it's difficult because it's a closed world. And uh, as a main observation, it is maybe better to, you, to prefer local or national banks uh, instead of international banks because they, they try to collect a lot of data. So th sorry for the problem of demo, but everything once again will be made available as soon as possible. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very, very much for the insight into this huge ongoing effort. Before taking questions, uh, some practical advice. If there are questions, please line up but, but, uh, the, uh, after the microphones. Some practical advice. You find all the slides and all the links to the websites on the Congress webpage. If you go to the schedule, the far plan, click on the uh, lecture, click on the lecturer's site, you find all the links and even a PDF of all the slides and the links. And it's very well worth a close look and a visit. Now I think we wait half a minute until those who want to leave have left the room. Those of you who want to ask questions, please line up on the microphones. C'est ta première. C'est la mienne. Tu vois pourquoi les plombés c'est important, d'accord Croisons un vieux routier. Jamais fonctionné sans plombé. Et heureusement j'avais un plan C, j'avais Windows. C'est un compte que Windows oh. est marché quoi face à de Linux. Ah, 
les problèmes de reconnaissance vidéo. Ah, J'ai tellement fait de conférences que maintenant, si tu veux, ouais. ça c'est l'horreur. Ouais. Ouais. Ok. Ok, ask your question. Um, yeah, hi. Um, you had this one slide uh, regarding which apps. Please app use the microphone. You had this one slide uh, which apps use which permissions uh, statistics page. Uh, and the second point was, uh, I think, uh, that the ability to use plain text communication, uh, use clear text communications, uh, what does it mean exactly that they could use uh, HTTP? Uh, but I uh, configure to use HTTPS, or what does it mean? Um. If I well understood, uh, why they use HTTP instead of HTTPS? No? Yeah, or do they use HTTP for sending uh, banking information? Uh, no. 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 When uh, we... Uh, I, I, n I never seen uh, an a uh, banking application uh, connecting uh, to the... Uh, bank account in HTTP. It's uh, the other functionality, like user tracking, which is a functionality, yeah. and uh, um, things uh, we, ha we have seen, like uh, the private key uh, received. Th this private key is not used for uh, connecting co to your account. It's used for other service services. So, uh, you, you, your money is pretty safe if uh, uh, if they not use some backdoor, like in the JP Morgan case. Uh, okay, but um, do they check a, uh, the certificates of this uh, of the server? And uh, there were some lectures last year and the year before on uh, how they all do it wrong and not check the certificates and SSL connections and stuff. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, so your question is: Is any app uh, trust trusting all uh, hosts or something like that, or not doing uh, good SSL? Yeah, that's okay. pretty much it. <laughs> I, I've seen one app, one application, uh, but it's not an, an official booking app. It's a Napsack uh, aggre um, aggregate. I don't know if it exists in English, but yeah. in French it exists. Um, which aggregates uh, lots of banking accounts uh, when you have uh, multiple accounts. And this app uh, uh, sang, um, uh, was sending the, the, the password uh, with uh, uh, SSL communications that trust all hosts. So uh, there, there was not no security at all. But it's uh, the only one case where I've seen a misconfiguration in SSL. Ah, okay, yeah. So it's not as bad as it sounded on the slide. <laughs> yeah. but, but in fact, the, the, the apps who are aggregating several app banking applications will be probably a, a problem in the future. Because at the, at the present time, we're mainly banking apps alone. But those uh, aggregation uh, applications uh, will have to be monitored because uh, there are on, only a very few. But the, the problem will be maybe at that level. Yeah, but uh, this is a whole different uh, problem, right? Uh, if, you, if you trust your bank to deliver a secure application, that's one thing. If you trust somebody else to do, <coughs> to do the proper job, uh, yeah. implementation of uh, all banking mm. APIs, that's uh, going to be a tough thing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, next question. Uh, after we now got quite a few of uh, very good examples for horrible practices. Uh, which was the best app you found? And to directly add on that question, how did the two German bank apps uh, compare? Uh, uh, the, the best, I don't know if they are the best uh, application, but uh, more generally, uh, I found that, for example, uh, some uh, uh, national bank in France wa was good, uh, like Société Générale, and some app from um, uh, India was good, 
but they are not known uh, at the uh, international level. Uh, uh, the Commerce Bank in Germany was pretty good, and the um, uh, Dutch Bank was also quite good. So uh, they, they, they were they, they was not uh, all horrible, <laughs> if it can uh, uh, reassure you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> there is one problem because there is two different points. You have vulnerability and security issue, but from a more general point of view, you have uh, users' privacy uh, respect. And in this case, uh, banks are maybe less uh, respectful of all, all, all data. Uh, maybe you have not, uh, you don't know the, con the concept of user tracking in uh, websites of or. If okay, you know. So each time you click on something, the user request is sent onto a server and say, uh, "This user have clicked on this, and it it uh, it stayed uh, uh, x x time on this Windows." So it's like uh, all you do is known and uh, is. Uh, uh, stored and uh, is the Adam some statistic and some behaviors uh, or they can know some behaviors of uh, uh, consumption. Uh, it's pretty uh, creepy to me. But thank you. Next question here. Uh, well, th uh, thanks a lot. First of all, thanks a lot for your work and uh, for presenting it because it is really interesting. Uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, this question. Uh, your program uh, reverse uh, does some reverse engineering of the code and you are able to browse the, the reverse engineered code. But how does it behave when the code is obfuscated, for example, with ProGuard, DexGuard, or if the code is developed using uh, NDK or something like that? Uh, the reverse uh, never fail. Okay, but th the code can be obfuscated, but uh, when you are uh, try trying to understand uh, reverse code, uh, you do not need to understand all it, um, all it happen, okay? Uh, the main important thing in Android application are Android API call, uh, which is the, the function that uh, the, the phone provide to access uh, uh, valuable information, okay? So if I can see this function, I basically can see uh, what the, f the application can do. Even if there are some junk code here and there, it's not important. And I, nev I never seen an application that, obfusc that obfuscates API calls. But it is theoretically possible, but I never seen it. M moreover, uh, static analysis, we, we all know, have uh, limitations on obfuscation and well nobody can uh, beat all obfuscation it's okay so it's why uh, we use also dynamic analysis in, okay. in fact uh, when obfuscated uh, when obfuscation is used this is poor obfuscation it means that with the tool it is possible to bypass the obfuscation but uh, if some uh, some some day we will find a very uh, deeply obfuscated uh, application. Well, we'll do by hand manually. So, but most of the time, the automatic reversing is still is sufficient in order to bypass very poor obfuscation that we. Uh, excuse me. What do you uh, what do you mean with bypass? Because when you obfuscate, you lose some. Understand, information. understand. At least understand the yeah. the function some functionalities. Ah, okay, 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 okay. okay. But it's, at the present time, we didn't ever found very obfuscated application. Mm. Oh, Sophisticatedly okay. obfuscated, no. They don't okay. care about protecting the apps. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, there's another question on the other microphone. Okay, in the beginning of the talk, you said you used uh, man in the middle for, to anal be able to analyze the SSL communication. But this, uh, to me, it means that the applications uh, should have understood they are not take, talking to the bank and should have just stopped communication at all. It's a very interesting question because 
uh, BNP Paribas, with his vulnerability, uh, beat my uh, SSL man in the middle. The vulnerability I've discovered is um, because of uh, user tracking framework. But uh, I could not connect to their server because they refused my connection. Why? Because I, I think, I, I'm not sure at uh, uh, 100%, 100%, but uh, 100%, uh, but uh, I think they embed their own list or set of certification authorities, and they do not use the system list. So uh, it basically bypass, uh, beat my, uh, my system. Okay, but this happened only with BNP Paribas. Uh, can you repeat, please? Uh, this happened only with one bank. The, all the no, others uh, worked? It happens uh, with maybe uh, five of the 27 banks. But uh, it's, um, the, the banks are uh, more, more careful, a little more careful on security. So some of the banks implement that trick, but uh, not all apps at all. Thank you. More questions? If not, again, you find the slides and the links on the Congress website and uh, keep an eye on it. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for the, Thank you. the useful work.